More often than we realize, music plays a prominent part in our lives. Some of us find an escape in music, a way to relate to someone or stand in someone else's shoes, or just simply as a way to relax. Ever notice how easy it is to recall the words of songs you haven't heard in years? We store thousands of songs in our memory walls. Music has an unusual mnemonic power. We remember patterns in music much better than patterns in words alone. Several scientific and psychological studies indicate that music can lift our moods, increase productivity, lower levels of stress-related hormones, among others. The messages released through this art form directly impact listeners in powerful ways. This is especially true of the youth and adolescents of our society, who are still extremely impressionable to the world around them. It has a command in shaping the perceptions of people and their general attitude towards life. Music is often said to be the universal language that goes beyond borders and reaches out to people all over, irrespective of language, caste, creed, race or age. It is capable of affecting us in profound and subtle ways, like when Saul's spirit was calmed by David's harp. Music has the power to bring people together who are otherwise separated by imperceptible walls. It is a safe haven for most who are looking around for a sense of community with those who have shared experiences to know they are not alone. Seeing how powerful a platform this is, it is no wonder that it is often distorted to spread negativity and immoral lifestyle. There is an overabundance of songs with lyrics that glorify sexual objectification of women, materialism, drugs, violence, death, you name it. These are not themes that naturally please us, and we all search for things that encompass beauty, joy and lasting peace. This is not to say that all mainstream music is bad and only promote addiction or violence. There are undoubtedly competent sources that offer good music without compromising on the moral compass. Good music has that enthralling capacity, the power to move hearts that have been long cordoned off by walls, the power to reflect and bring out the real emotion in people and often send wordless prayers to heaven. We are every so often unable to put words to the burdens of our heart. The Spirit too comes to help us in our weakness, for when we do not know how to pray properly, then the Spirit personally makes our petitions for us in groans that cannot be put into words. Romans 8.26 The need for relevant Christian music as an instrument to draw people back to the church is more than ever. One reason the youth of today often feel disconnected from church or are hesitant of associating with Christian circles is because they perceive that it's boring and not with the times. So how do we as missionaries spread the good news to this population? We understand that music is a mere platform to transport people to a closer understanding of God and a deep-set desire to know Him more. It is a means to an end. This brings us to the question at hand. As Christians, and more importantly, Christian musicians, what can we do to try and tip the scale towards positivity? As rightly put by the German composer Robert Schumann, to send light into the darkness of men's hearts, such is the duty of an artist. As musicians, we are bearers of influence, whether we are aware of it or not, and whether we intend to be. As a Christian musician, you are not only trying to bring glory to God by putting your talents to use, you are a signboard pointing towards Jesus and His cross. If your onstage presence and your life offstage are not preaching the same gospel, people are going to notice. Living the song, that's the challenge for most of us. People are going to attend the sessions of praise and worship and concerts, but leave unimpacted, uninfluenced and uninspired. Life in the ministry is one that makes you vulnerable, one that makes you look inwardly and wonder why God picked you. 
Let us not forget those within our ministry who struggle with sin and discouragement in the same way we do, as Satan actively seeks to lure each of us according to our weaknesses and vulnerabilities. It is through victory over these struggles that makes our music ministry sincere and inspiring. Hence, mutual concern, support and accountability are imperative. After all, He is the vine and we are the branches, and without Him we are nothing. All the inspiration and strength we could possibly need would come from Him. Most of us have at some point sung along to Michael W. Smith's song, When the Music Fades. This song serves as a reminder, something we easily forget when we focus too much on sounding good. That isn't to discount that we need to try and improve our God-given talents, but we need to keep our eyes and ears open for the calling within the calling, just like the one St. Teresa of Calcutta received. All music ministries and bands have a common calling, to bring people closer to Jesus. Then there's a unique subset of that calling, one that each band or ministry is being called to. Even after 11 years since the formation of the Acts of the Apostles band, we are trying to discern each day what it is that God is calling us to in a very personal way. For those of you who have a talent in songwriting, be intentional while creating songs. We need to get the right balance between meaningful and trendy. The ones who have a talent in singing or playing an instrument, and the lucky ones who can do both, Keep your ears open to good music that can be covered during praise and worship, prayer meetings, etc. Try and introduce listeners to new music whenever possible. In conclusion, we must strive to do all that we can in our personal capacities and at the same time, learn to walk in the realization that eventually the work of changing hearts is up to God. It is also a call for introspection. Are we truly doing what God has called us to do the way He wants it done? Are we in communion with Him to be able to accurately answer those questions? If not, let's make the necessary changes. If yes, let's strive on, dying to ourselves, pursuing toward the goal and allow God to do His work through us in a way only He can. Our job is to do His work. The results are up to Him.